In this video, I'm going to review the two different ways that you can make a solid three-dimensional component using Google SketchUp. The first is something that we reviewed in class, where on a two-dimensional surface, you draw the general shape of your two-dimensional logo. Uh, step two is you delete any extra surfaces that you don't want. Uh, step three is using the push-pull command to basically pull up your two-dimensional design into its various heights for your finished product. Uh, step four, well, if we look underneath this, you can see that in step three when you push pull like that, um, it kind of leaves the bottom open and it's uh, you've got empty space in there and it's not a solid object and so you actually have to go back and use the line tool <clears throat> to kind of fill, fill this in uh, and then delete all those extra lines there's any extra lines on surfaces you have to delete those. Let me show you what that, that finished product looks like. Oh, that wasn't the finished product. Uh, when you actually delete all those lines and uh, make the, the bottom solid, uh, this is what that bottom looks like. So notice there's a surface all the way throughout here and there's no extra lines. Uh, and if you found all of the errors all the extra lines or internal surfaces uh, and you click on this and make it a component it is already a component but if we go to the entity info this has a volume so we know and it says this is a solid component so if it has a volume we know that it can be printed Google SketchUp considers it to be a solid object now if you have a complicated design and you're not able to find all the errors and you're kind of at your wits end. There is another way to make a solid component, and that's what I want to spend most of my time talking about. Let me zoom back out. It starts uh, with the same initial two steps. You make your two-dimensional object, <clears throat> or the two-dimensional shape, traced out in, let's say, just a simple uh, flat rectangle. Then you're going to use the eraser tool, or the select and delete, to delete anything that you don't want. Now, instead of, um, like in the last step, immediately push or using the push-pull tool to uh, give it some depth and dimension you want to actually take each of these separate surfaces so let's say the outside one uh, and use the move or the copy command so you, move, you press move or M and control and you can move a copy of this um, over what you want to do is you want to get each one of the separate surfaces click on this that's a surface um, this, this is a surface right here. There's another separate surface. There's a separate surface. And we have two more right here. And you want to move a copy of each of those things over separately so they're not touching. Otherwise, they'll kind of stick together. And again, to do that, you press M to get to the move command, control to make a copy of something, click on the, the, the one individual surface you want to copy, and then move that all over. If you don't have your initial two-dimensional shape like this, you actually have to copy and move over things from the three-dimensional shape. So you could, uh, just for example, let's say you had something like this and you couldn't fix all of the errors. You could select this. You can move a copy of this over. Okay, you could select this, M, Control, move, you, move a copy of that over. Notice once we've done that, uh, those things are at different heights. And to do what we want to do, you want to make sure that each of these surfaces are on the same height. And so you could triple click this. Let's say we want to bring it down to the level of this. Press move. We don't want to move a copy. We want to move the actual thing. And make sure it's along the blue line. You see that we'll put it right along the blue axis. We can move this thing. Triple click it. Press M. Okay, move it down. So you can move each surface down that you've copied over from your three-dimensional model so it's all in the same plane uh, with which to continue. So I'm going to go back over here, assuming you have each piece, each surface copied and separate now on the screen. So once you have this, uh, and there's no extra lines, they're individual surfaces, you can see just by clicking on it, the next step is to now take e make a make a copy of all these things and move them over and now we want to use the push pull tool to pull up each of these surfaces so for example you click on this and let's say we wanted to 
pull that up a certain height. Uh, you're going to basically click on each of your surfaces and make those the heights that you want based on the design. And once you get that, then you can basically make each a solid component. So the benefit to this, this technique or this sequence of steps is that you can ensure that each individual part of your design will be a solid component and then the last thing is actually putting them all together. So I think I've already made those solid components. So let me show you how this thing will work here. Okay. So just to give you an idea of where we're going, we're going to take each of these things, make each a solid component, and then join all of those solid components together. Okay. So just a reminder how to make a solid component. Get back to our selection tool. You can triple click on this. Uh, we're going to make that a component. Say create and just make sure that it is a solid component. You right click and go to entity info. You can see that this has a volume of 0.1943 cubic inches and it says solid component. So we can actually leave this window up and let's make this a component. Now, once I click on that, notice it's got a volume. Make a component, create. It has a volume. So you can see that um, as we go through this, you can see that. Uh, they become solid components, and if for some reason one does not become a solid component, you know that that specific part of your logo is the issue. You need to go back to that and fix it. So make that a component. Let's finish this real quick. You can see that each one is getting a volume. Okay, so now each one of our, the pieces of our logo is a solid component. And now we're going to take these things and just put them all together uh, to become one solid component and then use uh, the solid toolbar, it's called the outer shell command, uh, to join those things actually together. We're going to kind of do that one by one. So uh, let's start moving some things in place. So again, uh, now we're going to move these entities. Uh, we're not going to copy them, so you're just going to press M. Whenever you're moving things, you want to kind of move them in one dimension at a time. So I'm going to move it up or over, and now I'm going to move this thing up along the red axis. Okay, you can see that uh, it's not quite there yet. So I go back to move, and I'm going to try to snap this. Notice how before I click the second time, it, it tells me, like, do you want this on the face? Uh, let's see here. Zoom in a little bit. Sometimes I give you better things. Okay, so we want to move it over directly to the right so you can see that the, the line is green and it says on face. I'm going to click the second time. So now we've basically snapped this on the face. You can see that these things, two things look like they're together. Let's just make sure that we can now make this, these two pieces together, a solid object that has a volume. So you're going to use the selection tool or the arrow tool click on one, you want to hold down the control button so you can select multiple objects. Now, if you have the solid toolbar, if you don't have the solid toolbar, you have to go to View, Toolbars, go down to Solid Tools, make sure that's checked. You select those things again. If I click this button, it's now joining these two things together, and let's just make sure it's still a solid component. Go to Entity Info and check it out. We now have a, a volume. I'm going to leave this thing up here just to make sure as we go through this process, uh, everything continues to stay solid. So we're going to build this thing up one at a time, each time making sure that it still has a volume. Okay. Now sometimes, uh, since everything is at the same height at the bottom, you can see that all these things are at the same height at the bottom, sometimes it helps to actually just um, rotate like this, so we're actually doing things from the bottom so we can just snap two individual surfaces. So I'm going to move this thing, the water part over. Okay, and we can, let's see here, snap to that point. Looks like those things are touching. Before we move on, let's just double check that we can join these things. So I'm going to select the previous object and that. Notice it doesn't have a volume yet, but let's join these using the outer shell command. Now we have a larger volume because we've just added the water to this. Okay, we're going to keep going. Let me now add or move this over. Snap to right there. 
I'm going to select everything, now join that next little tab, and again, our volume increases, it's still a solid component. Let's move this over. Okay. Rotate up a little bit. Now, sometimes they're hard to place, so you want to make sure that uh, you've got specific things that you can snap to. Notice this, this part of the, the ray of the sunshine. See how like there's a, an empty space where one of these things comes into it? Well, we could snap that tiny point to one of like the, its appropriate endpoints. So um, when I click, when I press M to move it, initially click on the spot you want to move something to. So I'm going to click on that, and let's see here. Notice uh, it's you know it doesn't line up when you get over here, but if you get over here, we're going to move that specific spot to the top of that little wave, and I click on there, and you can see that now it all fits nicely together. And it should, since it came from that two-dimensional surface, which all fit together previously. So now, uh, press the spacebar to get to select. Hold down Control so you can select your other object. I'm going to join these two solid components together to make one solid component. Press the outer shell button, and we still have a volume. So we just have two more little pieces to go um, to build up the rest of our design. Let's move, let's move this first one over. I select the spot, a top surface, and move this over until it looks like it joins nicely. Notice that it's not actually interior, it's not inside there, it's snapping right to the surface. Let's again, as we go, build up, join this little solid component to our entire big solid component. And we still have a volume, so we're good. So we only have one more piece to go, and this will be one complete solid component with no errors. Again, press move command, and let's, let's move it from one part of the top surface, so we're snapping to this. I move it over a little bit. Okay, let me zoom in a little bit to give a little bit better precision. It says on edge and group, so let me click. If it doesn't, well, let's see what happens. So I'm going to press select, select that component and the whole thing, see if it did it. Awesome. So now we have one solid component with a with one individual uh, volume, and it says actually solid group because we've grouped solid components, so now we have a solid group. So now if I zoom out and rotate back up, okay, we have one complete solid component that we can move around, and once you get to this point, you know, you guys can press the S key to scale it if you want to, um, or the move command, and you can click on one of these little red plus signs, you can rotate around, so you can orient your logo and scale it down. Uh, so it fits within our 80 by 80 millimeter by 10 millimeter high printing volume limitation. So there you go.